Lori from 610 WTVN. Chris, how do you mentally handle going from games where you might not see the ball very much to games where you're making such a big impact as you did on Friday night? Uh, it goes for everybody in the receiver room. We kind of uh, be it could be me having a big game one game, and then uh, probably Ben having a big game next game. You go from having six catches one game to having zero catches the next game. Uh, we just uh, we're unselfish in the receiver room, and we have a great bond with, with each other, and we just happy for each other. So you talk about having a big game. Can you have a big game without having any catches, though? Uh, of course, we are uh, trying to make an impact on special teams and. Uh, try to take that frustration out uh, during a game. And uh, we kind of use that in the blocking game also. Uh, we try to put good routes on film, and uh, we can't control where the ball goes. So. Frustration's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, third row right, Rob from the dispatch. Chris, he saw Ryan Day uh, as a quarterback's coach and kind of part-time head coach last year. And now he's, he's had a, this many games. To uh, kind of adjust, is he the same guy that he was last year? Have you seen any changes in him in terms of him evolving, becoming more even confident uh, from where he was last year? Uh, I believe he's the same guy. Uh, he re he recruited me, so uh, he hasn't really changed much. But he uh, he's more focused on on the job, and uh, when I walk past the office every day, he's he's watching film, and uh, he hasn't changed as offensive coordinator or, or calling plays, so. Uh, he hasn't really changed much, and uh, that's what I like about him. What was he like as a recruiter? He said he recruited you. What was the connection there? Uh, he wasn't really trying to force me to come here. He wanted me to take take all my visits and choose what's best for me, and uh, he built that relationship with me and my parents, and uh, that's what my parents loved about him. Front row right, uh, Tim Letterman Rowe. Yeah, you know, on your uh, first touchdown the other night, did you use the umpire in the middle of the field as your turning point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but number one, was that a read all the way for you? Or was that the play, the play all the way uh, to cut it up straight up the field? Uh, that was a play. We wanted to get quarters in that, and uh, for that play, and and we got that. And uh, I had to go in there to Sam to uh, to have the safety fall off of me, and the uh, middle of the field was wide open. So yeah, this is my next question, but I wanted to ask: where, where, Do you are you aware of the umpire standing there in the middle of the field? Do you do you see him all the time? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you? How do you try to avoid him, et cetera? How does that alter play sometimes? Uh, I, I saw him, but uh, I didn't know he was that close to me when I uh, watched the TV copy. So uh, I saw him, but uh, I had to avoid him. Uh, I, I didn't want to look too fast uh, for Justin, so I had to avoid him and, and try to get open. I want to say, would you describe this as, is this an attacking offense? How would you describe this to somebody who's never watched you guys play? What What is your sense of? What's special about you guys from an offensive standpoint? Um, we could say we're attacking. We are uh, very consistent with run and pass game. Uh, we got two great running backs in the backfield, and we got a, a tandem of receivers that could do everything. So, and then we got one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, and uh, one of the best off offensive linemen in the nation. So, um, we're very balanced, and we can't wait to keep going. Chris, you guys have been very successful on, on third downs this season. Um, there was a play against Northwestern where it was third and 15, and Justin kind of scrambles and, and, and finds you. How much is his ability to create really important on, on those third downs in particular where the play kind of is able to stay alive when you have to get 15 yards or so? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, really, it's really good for us receivers. and um, he, he likes to keep plays alive with his feet. and. Uh, the scramble drills in, in effect. So our second part, our second part of the route is very important, and uh, we try to get open for him. So right next door, Bill from the dispatch. Yeah, question about Justin. Um, how quickly did you develop a close relationship with him? Uh, we he came in. He wasn't. He's not really a talker. He he doesn't, he doesn't really talk much. So uh, he came in and uh, kept his head down and. And he worked extremely hard, and uh, he, he gained that respect. And uh, yeah, he gained that respect from the team. And uh, we look at him as, as a leader of the offense and a leader of the team. So, When was the first time he made one of those wow plays, whether it was spring practice, just throwing the ball around, or whatever it may have been, that made you go, this guy could be something special? Uh, I think it was the first couple of days of spring practice. And uh, it felt like he, he wasn't missing a, a, missing a pass. So. 
uh, he's he's putting everything on target and everything uh, looked perfect to us. And uh, that's when we gained that uh, respect and uh, we counted on him. So. Uh, back row right, Spencer from the Letterman row. Chris, uh, on that punt that got rolled back to the punter and kind of just dove on it, you seem more excited about that on the field than you did two touchdowns you scored. Why was that? Why is that? Uh, we put so much, so much effort and uh, so much technique and fundamentals into that, into special teams. And uh, when it comes to special teams, we all work as a, as a, a unit. And uh, if if one person doesn't do his job, then uh, we're not gonna get the job done. So uh, when that, when you snapped that, and uh, we were all excited for that. And uh, I think it would have been a block punt, but uh, yeah, we uh, worked, we all worked all week, and we took so many rests for that, just for that play. Yeah, I think I think somebody got their hands on it. Second row left, Steven from Cleveland.com. Chris, back to like the Michigan State game. It's one thing to just not have a catch in the game because that happens a lot, but to not even get a target. You know, when you go back and you look at that film, and like, is there anything you're looking at to maybe like things you could have improved on, or maybe have gotten open a little more often, mm-hmm. or anything like that? Uh, definitely. Uh, I think that was one of my worst games, and in, in my opinion, and uh, uh, we had them two weeks off, so having zero catches and. Having two weeks off to try to rebound from that, it was it was real tough for me, and uh, uh, I, I feel like uh, Michigan State's defense was was pretty good. So uh, they had uh, certain coverages for our offense, and it was it was tough to uh, to get over that. How do you go from not even having a target to being able to do what you did on Friday night? Like, what, what did you change, or what did you adjust to? Uh, I didn't really change anything. I kind of changed my mindset that. Um, I'm happy for my teammates, and uh, as a, as a year as the year kept going on, we kind of ha- got uh, more unselfish, and and we just we can't control where the ball goes, so uh, we just try to make an impact and wherever and help our team win. I, is it tough to make that type of adjustment when you've got that much talent in the room where you can't go from five six catches in a game to mm-hmm. maybe not even getting a look one game? Yeah, it's real tough, but um, you know all, all season we kind of built that bond, and uh, we. Have blood, sweat, and tears together, and uh, we all try to build it upon each other. And uh, the receiver room is is full of talent, and uh, we try to put whatever on film. And we 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 really can't control what's going on, so we try to uh, be the best of ourselves and be happy for each other. Third row left, Dan from Eleven Warriors. Chris, when you're going up against a defense like this that's ranked number one in the country, do you guys view this as a benchmark to see how good this offense really can be? Uh, we we believe we're the best in the country, also. So, we believe we have the best offense, and we're going to get the best defense. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Is there more pressure going into a game like this to prove that because you know how good the competition is? Uh, there's re- there's really no pressure on us. We uh we prepare to s- we pre- prepare we prepare the same uh, every week. So, uh, we gonna work hard in practice, and uh, we uh probably gonna have some different schemes for the for the defense, and uh, we'll see what happens. What do you see in Wisconsin's secondary? What are the things they do that are going to present challenges to you guys as receivers? Uh, they have some different coverages and uh, different te- techniques they use in the secondary. And uh, last week, they kind of went cover zero most of the game. And uh, against the team up north, they kind of ran different coverages and drop eight and cover one. So uh, if they run if they run man, we, we have the uh, best. We went against the best DBs in, in the country in our team, uh, spring, summer. and in fall camp, so uh, I think we'll be prepared. Front row right, Austin from Letterman Row. Chris, you talked earlier about Justin's, you know, accuracy and that it looked perfect in practice. Is it always that way with him? I mean, obviously his completion percentage is high, but it seems like in games that you guys rarely have to you know, get outside of your, outside mm-hmm. the numbers to catch passes. Is it really that way all the time with him? Uh, yeah, Justin's a, he's a, I feel like every pass is perfect, you know, and uh, when we get open, he's, the ball is perfect right there on time. And uh, even when we're not open, he puts the ball where we could catch it and the DB can't. So uh, I got much, much love and respect for Justin, and I can't wait to keep going with him. I, I would think that, that makes your job a lot easier if you know that it's going to be where it should be. You know, mm-hmm. There's no uncertainty running your route where the football might show up, right? Yeah. How much easier does that make your job? Uh, it makes it uh, way much easier. And uh, even when, like, uh, the DB's close and – he gives us a chance, and uh, he trusts us, and we trust him. So, front row, middle, Dave from twenty-four-seven. Last couple questions. 
Chris, I'm just curious how much your life has changed in the last 11 months. Maybe a year ago at this time, the average fan maybe didn't know much about you. Then the Michigan game happened, your breakout game, Big Ten championship game, and then everything you're doing this year. Just how has your life changed in the last 11 months? Uh, there's definitely a lot more people know who I am. And, uh, you know, everyday life, going to class, is is more people coming up to me and, and asking for a picture and stuff. But uh, it doesn't really change my mindset. And I always stay humble, and that's how my family is, so. When do you think the light kind of came on for you? And I, it could have been right away because I remember Urban and Coach Day were talking about you early in the year before, you know, before you had your breakout game. Mm -hmm. um, when do you feel like the light kind of came on for you? Um, I feel like it came on, I would say, Michigan State last year when I had those two catches. And uh, Coach Meyer and Coach Day kind of kept uh, hyping my name to the media and stuff. And I just tried to stay down and uh, – just do his best for the team and try to help us win. And final question, front row left, Doug from Cleveland.com. Um, you guys seem to have success with some out routes and comebacks and Justin hitting you guys on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what goes into receivers and Justin being able to, to hook up on those? Sometimes it looks easy, and I'm sure it's not as easy as it looks sometimes. Yeah, we rep those a ton in practice and uh, – just practice. Practice makes the the game easier. So uh, we probably rep that about ten reps, ten reps in practice to that one to that one play in the game. So uh, it makes it makes it easy for us to uh, to rep those. And if they gonna give it to us, then we would take it. So you, uh, can you feel? I mean, depending what their coverage is or the way certain teams play, are there times when you feel like, oh man, I, this is gonna be a free ten or twelve yards? I know we can connect on this. Uh, definitely when they when they play. Uh, Free access when they playing off, we we take it as a route zone error. So uh, we just we just take what they give us, and uh, we we happy with it. And is that just again? It's you got to run a precise route. Justin has to put it in the right spot. But mm -hmm. if you do it correctly, it's it's almost always there. Uh, of course, uh, we gotta we gotta uh, run the route uh, perfectly and not leak into our route. And you know we know Justin's gonna put it right there. So uh, it's almost there there every time, and uh, we just rep it. A lot. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.